praise God. I hope your Christmas was enjoyable. You had an opportunity to not only be involved in Christmas and celebrating Christmas, you had an opportunity to experience Christmas with your family, your friends, or your Zoom chats, or just even if you were by yourself. Just enjoy yourself, enjoy the time. Amen. So uh, let's stand up and say our Bible confession so we can pray and get into this word that I think God gave me. He changed it up for me this morning. Whew. Working for God is tough. He'd be changing stuff up on you in the, in the last second at 530 when I woke up, went down to our war room, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready. And then, bam, he had me change some things. I was like, man, am I really ready? If he said change him, I must be ready. So uh, hallelujah, Father God. This is our Bible. This is God speaking to us. Our eyes are open. Our hearts are prepared to receive all of God's promises and instructions. Today we make our Bible the final authority in our life so that in every circumstance we will bear good fruit and others will see Christ in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, whoo. You said we're two of us or more gather, you are present. So we thank you for your presence. Lord God, we just ask that you come over this service, cover it, protect it, and lead it. And Father, you know what you gave me this morning, so I pray that you bring all things to my mind and my remembrance, and that I accurately, effectively communicate your word and what you've given me today. No more and no less. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, you may be seated. So the title of this message is Jesus Over Everything. Jesus Over Everything. I need you again. Thank you. So I'll begin with, wow, it's been a year. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a full year. It's not over yet, but uh, almost. Uh, any, everything from the death of Kobe to COVID and everything in between. You know, and it, it's so amazing. It kind of started when Kobe passed. Not that he played a role in this, but just the fact that he was the first quote unquote celebrity basketball player that died when we have been losing people before him and after. But because he's in the limelight or celebrity light, his death was focused. And I'm not taking anything away from that, but we all have lost somebody, which the limelight, celebrity light, social media doesn't cover. So I'm not bigging them up. I'm not giving them props, COVID or, or Kobe, but the, we've all had struggles in our life and challenges that have not been lighted up. So it's just clear to me that that a lot of things have been happening and have happened that uh, has gotten our focus this year, kind of more so than last year, 2019. And who, who knows what's to come in 2021? We want it to be better, but, you know, it, things are going to get worse before they get better. They have to because Jesus has to come back. You know, we can't save ourselves. I mean, look at, our, look at the things that we're doing. You know, it's evident that we can't save ourselves. So it's not over. So I don't mean to be doom and gloom, but hey, the Bible talks about that. So you can look it up. That's not my message today, but you can look it up. But one of the things that was clear to me this year was uh, the great reveal, our character. Our character has been on display, has been on show since the beginning of this year. It's, it's always on display, but more so, again, focused on this year because everything has kind of transpired and happened from, from death to politics, you name it. But we have been on display, and the reveal has been, or the reveal has displayed who we are, what side we've chosen to be on, and in some cases, what's truly in our hearts. Now, I, I obviously am not God, and I can't speak to what's on your heart, and I can barely speak to what's on my heart at times. But based on the actions and the behavior of people, we've seen their heart on display. 
you know, just scroll up and down your feed, you'll see it, you know. Um, I don't know what's really in your heart. I can't change your heart. I said that plenty of times before up here, that we can be a part of the change, but God cha ultimately changes your heart. So until your heart changes, nothing changes in your life. Once you allow him to change your heart, your perspective changes. And once your perspective changes, how you act and respond on your social media feed changes also. When you put him in your heart, he comes out of your heart. So not to point Pastor Grady out, but he said some of us are struggling with that sword of the spirit. You know how many of us are picking up the Bible on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? You know, and there's times I forget. The times I go to the Word and be like, man, what, do you, what, what are you trying to say for me today? If I don't pick it up, I feel kind of guilty, you know, but I pick it up and sometimes I don't know where to go. But sometimes I pick it up and I know where to, exactly where to go and where he's leading me because I thank God for his daily bread because there's more to life than just food. It's his Word. It's his daily bread that he gives us. So the great reveal this year has been quite revealing. Um, and it's kind of displayed our character as Christians, you know, how we've acted throughout this year. And we can't tell if you're Christian or not when you say you're Christian. You know, we all say we're Christians, but there's a difference between Christian or Christian and a follower of Jesus Christ. One holds you more accountable than the other, which I'll explain. So let's find out what the word says. Turn with me to John 13. We're going to be reading 34 and 35 in the, the Passion Translation. <clears throat> and um, Danny, can I trouble you to bring a bench up here, please? If you don't mind, behind you, just in case I need it. <clears throat> John 13 to 30, uh, 13, th if you don't, that one behind you, if you don't mind, yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. Jesus says in verse 34, I give you now a new commandment. Love each other just as much as I have loved you. You see here Jesus is setting a new standard for us. He says with the commandment of love, he sets before his followers to follow a standard of love as we love and care for one another. Thank you, my brother. Verse 35, he says, for when you demonstrate the same love I have for you that I give to you by loving one another in person and through social media, I threw that one in, it doesn't say that in scripture, everyone, say everyone, will see and know that you are what? My followers. I mean, how plain can that be? When we demonstrate his love towards one another, we actually glorify him. We actually show the world that we, his true, we are his true followers. Now, does everyone really see and know that? No. Sometimes I don't see it. Sometimes I don't know it. And I'm sure you feel the same way. Well, if we take a scroll down Facebook, Twitter, Parler, CNN comments, Fox comments, Newsmax comments, does everyone see and know that we are his true followers? It's funny how we're quick to say we're Christian, but very few of us follow Jesus, let alone believe in him. Now, I know that you all believe in Jesus Christ because I've seen you at church plenty of times and I've seen, you, I've seen your heart. But there are a lot of us that say we're Christians and don't actually follow Jesus. We praise God, but we don't praise the son. The son that he gave us so that we could spend eternal life with him and gave up for us. We pay homage to God but not homage to a son. You know, when I was a Muslim growing up as a kid, I spent 12 years in the nation of Islam, and we always just gave props or just acknowledged Jesus as a prophet, but not really worship. It's like, oh yeah, Jesus, we know he exists, but Prophet Muhammad was our prophet. So that's, that's what I mean is that we say we're Christians, but we don't believe, we, everybody believes in God, but they don't believe in Jesus. You know, these, oh yeah, Jesus, yeah, I know about Jesus, but nah, I don't know if I follow Jesus. And there's a difference. So how can we say we're Christians and we don't follow Jesus? That's a good question. Let me explain. Let me explain. 
The dictionary definition of a Christian is a person professing belief in Jesus or in the religion based on the teachings of Jesus. What is the common denominator there? Jesus. Now that's a good starting point, but there's much more to being a Christian or following Jesus than just saying that you're a Christian. Now in my studies, the word Christian is used three times in the New Testament. You can write this down if you like or put this in memor your mem remembrance. Acts 11, 26, Acts 26, 28, and 1 Peter 4, 16. The followers or believers of Jesus Christ were first called Christians in Antioch, and which explains that in Acts 11, 26, because their behavior, activity, and speech was like Christ. Their activity, behavior, and speech was just like Christ. So the word Christian literally means belonging to Christ or being a follower of Christ. You can't have Christianity without Jesus Christ. But for some reason, we have separated the two in our actions, behavior, and our speech. Well, unfortunately, over time, the word Christian has lost a great deal of its meaning and significance, and it's often used for someone who is religious or has a high moral standard or value, but who may or may not be a true follower of Jesus Christ. So remember when I say true follower of Jesus Christ, remember I say Christian, and remember I say follower of Christ, because they're all going to come to a to, um, it's all going to come together at the end. So being a Christian really doesn't mean much today because everybody and their mama say they're a Christian. Your neighbor says they're a Christian. Your cousin Vinny says they're a Christian. Uh, um, your politicians say they're Christians. Celebrities say they're Christians. Athletes say they're Christians. Okay, then you got to be a Christian if you, if you hold one of those positions. But are they true followers? Now, who am I to judge? I am not God, so let's say that now. Pastor is not judging the celebrities, the politics, politicians, athletes, entertainers, or Vinny. I question my belief at times. That's why I have to stay in the Word. That's why I have to stay married to Pastor Timothy to keep me in check. <laughs> because I go left and I go right. You know, but sometimes the best place to be is left and right of center, which is what, center? Does that make sense? Anyway, you, so, so you guys follow me? Amen? Okay. A little kind of monotone, but it's, in just a moment, we'll kick in. So how? Where was I? So I'm not the one that judges, and I'm not saying who is Christian or not, but based on their actions, you can pretty much, based on what you see, determine if they're Christian or not. Because what they do in the public unfortunately, I mean, controls our thinking today. You know, what you see me do in public, you're like, if I do it at, in the public, I must be doing it at home. I must be living my life like that. So we don't really know, but their actions through their behavior, through their speech, through their activity, through their words, doesn't seem like they're true followers. And it doesn't really seem like we're true, truly followers of Christ either. Because again, everyone can call themselves a Christian, but not follow Jesus. So the Bible tells us in John 17, 16, that we are not of this world. So we live and operate in this world, but we're not of the world. We don't act like the world acts. So there must be something about being a Christian, follower of Jesus Christ, and the world. So he says we are not of this world. So you have to separate the two. So we, don't, we shouldn't be posting like the world. We shouldn't be talking like the world. We shouldn't be treating our wives like the world, our children like the world, operating in our business on, jo on the job like the world. Because he makes it very clear, we are not of this world. We live and operate in this world, but we don't act like the world does. Amen? You figure since we go to church, live in a Christian nation, serve the less unfortunate, we're all good people, that makes us Christian? No. Just like going to church don't make you Christian, going in the garage don't make you a car. There's much more to being a Christian or being a car. But everyone says they're Christian and at the same time make derogatory comments, derogatory posts, and, der and say derogatory things to one another. Thank you for raising your hands. Now I'm not saying we don't slip sometimes but because, because we all do, but that free speech, those free words will get you in trouble, will get you hurt, and they hurt people. So be careful of what you say. 
because you could reap what you say, reap what you sow. You see that everywhere, everywhere. Andre, hey, this ain't nothing new to you. You see it everywhere you go. So to say we're Christian means absolutely nothing today, but to follow Jesus does. And this is where the meat, of the, the meat and bones comes together here. To follow Jesus means to walk like he walks, to live like he lives, and of course, love like he loves. So although we're different colors, different shapes, sizes, and some have gray hair, some don't, that's not the po that doesn't determine my love for you. I told you what I had been struggling with as a, as a um, young man coming from the, na from the nation, seeing black and white. I've seen black and white for like 12, 15 years of my life. So that doesn't just automatically come out of you. So I knew I needed to change. So I'm in church. I'm following a white pastor at my former church. I'm submitting to Jesus Christ who everywhere you go, he looks white. I'm doing things that I didn't never think I would do before. I never had a white man teach me before, let alone my own pastor, Pastor Ed who I love immensely. So he's been working on my heart. But I still have to love like Jesus loved because I call myself a follower of Jesus. Amen? To follow Jesus means to deny yourself your wants, your needs, and your, your desires. Putting all that, aside, all that aside and saying, I choose Jesus over everything else. I choose Jesus over my comfort. I choose Jesus over my likes and dislikes. I choose Jesus over you being white. I choose Jesus over you being a, a Republican or a Democrat. I choose Jesus over all that. Over all that, I choose Jesus. Amen? Jesus over everything, not just some things, but everything. Say everything. Everything. Everything means everything. Am I missing something when I say everything? Nope. So what does that mean? What does it mean to follow Jesus? Let's turn to Luke 9, verse 23 to 26. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And we've all, I think this, these scriptures are very familiar because you've read them before, you've heard them before. Bear with me. So what does Jesus say about following him? Well, without scripture, I wouldn't know. So I'm going to turn to scripture, Luke 9, 23 to 26. It says, then Jesus said to the crowd, to everyone, not missing anyone, if any of you in this crowd wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Amplified Version says, deny, disown, forget, lose sight of yourself and your own interests. What? That's everything. Every, everything means everything. You mean I got to give up everything, let it go, drop it? Yes, you do. I, did, I bet you didn't know that when you signed up to be a, uh, be a follower of Jesus. When you came down to the altar and, and if I told you to give up everything, you probably would run. You didn't know that till you walked through what it's like to be Jesus. He says, take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, <laughs> oh, I'm hanging on, you will lose it. You will fall, you will drop, you will die. Because you're trying to hold on to something that has, that's not tangible. Jesus is tangible. See, the reason people don't believe in Jesus is because they don't believe he's tangible in their life. Usually when you talk about Christianity, you're talking about the whole thing, which is tangible. But you talk about Jesus, where is he? That's not something I can grab a hold to. But he says, hang on. If you, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. You mean to tell me if I give up my life, I will actually have a life? He says, yep. Verse 25. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are, are yourself lost or destroyed? So check this out. I was watching Wonder Woman. But it wasn't that great. But the message was this guy had all the power of making wishes come true that, if I remember correctly, he was going to just die. I mean, he was going to be like, like king of the wish maker, grantor. But he wouldn't stop. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you see money, a movie, and they're fighting over money, and the money blows away, they're still fighting. 
and they can't even get a dollar after all those millions of dollars that they just flew away. So he says, you got to lose yourself, destroy yourself, because if you don't, you will gain nothing. So don't try to protect what's not yours. Verse 26, if anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you. Verse 27, I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. We're not going to get in that, in that script because that's a lot there. But notice in verse 23, Jesus says, to everyone, everyone in the crowd. It's like a bullhorn. To everyone in the crowd. To everyone in the crowd. No matter who you are, for those I can't even see. All the way back there. Even back, back there. Not just his disciples, but the crowd. If any of you, meaning some will and some won't, hear his voice or, or come to him. If any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way. So Jesus is saying, if you're serious about following me, you have to be serious about giving up those things that you desire, want, and feel you need. You have to deny yourself of those things. So deny yourself. What does all that mean? We can go to the plain kind of definition of that. But the, I looked up the Greek word for deny. It's our, our parnonia my, which means to disown, renounce, repudiate, disregard. Repudiate sounds to me like, like you're spitting. Like I, repu I just, re I don't want to have, any, have anything to do with you any longer. Which is denying oneself conveys the sense of a person disassociating him or herself from him or herself self-interest to serve a higher purpose. In other words, you're kicking down all that anything that you stand for. You're repudiating anything that you need, want, and desire for Jesus. Who gives you what? You don't have a lot of money in your bank account, but you have money to pay your bills. You don't have, your refrigerator's not full, but you're eating. You don't have the best clothes on your back, but you got clothes on. That's the God we serve. It means to put others' interests before your own. Let people go in line. Man, I tell you, I went out the day after Christmas or the day before Christmas, and man, there ain't nobody nice out there. Ain't nobody nice. And I may not have been nice either, but man, you mean to tell me you couldn't? There's the stoplight at the wall, traffic light. You've passed me, passed another car, braked, and I'm at the same light with you five minutes later. In line in the grocery store, I want this, I want that. Excuse me, well, wait. Or they'll just bump into you, don't say anything. Like, where's the care regarding concern went for people? And I'm not saying I'm the best, but I notice these things as you what? Stay in the word, common decency, kind care regarding concern for others. To put others' interests before your own. It's like, you know what, go ahead. You want to, you know, another movie we watched, because we was watching a lot of movies. And I don't recommend watching this movie because it had more than a few cuss words in it, but you do what you want to do. You, you seek the Lord on that. But it was a good movie. It was, and you know terrible movies that last like an hour and a half? Those are terrible movies. Because most movies last, what, not, uh, longer than that, I would say, Dylan? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Anything over two hours, I say pretty much a good movie. Anyway, don't get caught up in the hours. The message is this. The movie's called Unhinged. The principle of it is this guy became all unhinged because he didn't get a courtesy horn uh, honk. He killed people. He went on his way to run people over and to make this person's life miserable. And all, she had, and all he asked her to do in defense of him, not for his killing, but before he started killing, was all she had to do was apologize. So the principle is just, you know what? Because you're bigger than me, you know what? I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> We went up into Whole Foods a couple years ago, and this guy was following me in the, like a week prior. He was a tall white guy, big white guy, and he was like calling me the N-word. And, I, and I'm, in the, I'm, I'm looking fly in my car, it's summertime, I got the sunroof down, I'm bumping a little Christian music. So he comes up and calls me the N-word. So I'm like, whatever, you know, because I'm not going to get angry when I'm passing by in traffic on Rainbow, come on. But then a week, two later, I find him, he finds, we see each other in Whole Foods. <laughs> and I almost came out of character. He's a tall white dude. White dude. And when I say that, I'm just saying what he is and what he was, okay? Nothing personal. So 
my wife reminds me, she says, I went up to him like, okay, <laughs> what's up? Like, we're in the store right now. What you going to do? You know? But I didn't. I stopped because I realized if he was to swing, I'd probably get hurt. And if I were to duck, he'd probably get hurt. So sometimes you got to take a back seat to things. So if that's for, any, if it ain't for anybody but myself, praise God. So putting interest before your own. There's a follower. Yeah, excuse me. Sorry about that. So to say you're a follower of Jesus means to deny yourself from the pleasures of this world, choosing Jesus over everything, anything and everything that would hinder your walk with him, our, your pride. That tends to hinder our walk with him. Our ego, our sin, ourselves. Eeks, you mean to tell me? I am the biggest distractor, the biggest, what am I trying to say? The anything and everything I do distracts me from following Jesus? I say yes. To follow Jesus means we don't take life personally, we take the gospel of Jesus Christ personally. That's what we're doing. We're on this earth to take the gospel personally of Jesus Christ moving forward to other people beyond ourselves, beyond these four walls. We're to be the example in the outside world. To follow Jesus means to don't take it personal. Take the gospel personal. It doesn't mean that if you want to do something, you can't. It means that you must take your, your wants, your needs, your desires, place them before the Lord, lay them down at his feet, the one that governs your body, the one that governs your life. So does he truly govern your life? That's the question you should be asking yourself. Jesus said in best in Matthew 6, 19 to 24, if you turn there for me. Jesus said, don't keep hoarding for yourself earthly pleasures or treasures that, you can, that, that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. Instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. For your heart will always pursue what you value and what you treasure. I'd say there's been a lot of treasuring this year, and I don't think it's been God. Verse 22, the eyes of the spirit allow elevation light to enter your, into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. But if your eyes are focused on money, the light cannot penetrate. The darkness takes, it takes its own place. How profound will it be with the darkness within you if the life of the truth can, can in, cannot enter? How could you worship two gods at the same time? How can we? We can't. Hmm. How can you worship two gods at the same time? You will have to hate one and love the other and be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't worship true God while enslaved to the God of money. You can't be at two places at the same time. You can't say you love Jesus and you cussing on, the, on, on social media. F this, F that. Now, you can love Jesus in your heart, but there's something about a bunch of curse words and actions, and then you say, I love you. I don't know. If, if I cussed at my wife and hit her upside the head, and then I said I love her, you think she's going to believe me? I don't know. You can't be accumulating wealth on earth and expect your wealth to accumulate in heaven. Mm -hmm. If I placed two individuals up here and they went, one went left, one went right, could you follow them both? So we would either love one or hate the other. Bob Dylan has a song called You Gotta Serve Somebody, which is one of my pastor's favorite songs. He says here, you might be a rock and roll addict prancing on the stage. You might have drugs at your command, women in a cage. You may be a businessman or some high degree thief. They may call you a doctor or they may call you a thief. You may be a state trooper. You may be the head of a, some big TV network. You may be rich or poor. You may be blind or lame. You may be living in another country under another name. You may be a preacher who's spiritual with your spiritual, you may be a preacher with your spiritual pride. You may be a city a councilman taking bribes. You may be working in a barbershop. You may know how to cut hair. You may be somebody's mistress. You may be somebody's heir but you're gonna to have to serve somebody. Yes, I say you're gonna to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, 
but you're going to have to serve somebody. So who are we going to serve? Who are we going to serve in the new year? Are we going to serve Washington, the politicians on the left and right, or are we going to choose the service uh, to, 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 uh, to worship God and to follow God in the new year? Who's going to be your God? Who's going to be my God, our God, in 2021? Verse 23 says, if anyone wants to follow me, you have to give up and take, give up your own way and take up my cross and follow me daily. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for, up for me. Jesus requires us carrying a cross, and I don't mean a cross around your neck or that symbol around your neck. It's a symbol of death. The cross was a symbol of death. It's a death to crucify yourself daily, as Galatians says. When Jesus is telling his disciples they needed to put death or a stop to their plans, their desires, and turn their life over to him daily, daily, every second minute hour of the day. You know we serve a real God, and we have a bunch of real people in here, and we truly talk about we're transparent. I seek to serve God daily. I seek to deny myself daily. On social media, it's a battle with my wife, not her personally, but making sure I do the right thing is, da is a daily battle, is a daily struggle. With my kids, my daughter who's 19, woo, that's a daily, that's, that's a second, secondly struggle. Every second I'm struggling. I mean, that's real. So Jesus is saying, this is a daily struggle. I want you to deny your plans, your desires, your ways, your thoughts, everything that you can think of, put a stop to it. Deny yourself of, this, of those things daily. It is no longer I or you that lives in you. It is he that lives in you. So it's no longer Andre who lives in me. It's Jesus who lives in me. How do you tell? Through what I say, my activity, my behavior, and my speech. And I'm not saying that, um, oh, I'm sorry, Galatians uh, 2.20, I said that. Yes. Once you accept Jesus in your life, the old you is going away. Now, I say going because it's a daily struggle, right? It's a daily process, and it doesn't happen overnight. So there's no judgment condemnation if you're in the process because we're all in the process. No one is perfect but Jesus. To follow Jesus means that you are mindful of what you say. You're mindful of what you're posting. You're mindful of what, how you're living. You're mindful and have care, regard, and concern for the people around you, especially the people looking up to you, following you. Luke 9, 23 says, Jesus said to the crowd, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. If any of you wants to follow me, you must give up your own way and take up your cross daily to follow me. So let's break down, take up your cross daily. To take up one's cross is a place, to take up your cross is a place of sacrifice. On that cross, Jesus sacrificed his life for us. It's a place of atonement. Jesus worked on, worked work on the cross for our freedom and from the penalty and the power of sin. It's a place of redemption. Jesus glorified for our forgiveness and our restoration to God. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 38, he who does not take up his cross daily to follow me, conforming wholly to my example in living and if it need be in dying is not worthy of me. So you see, Jesus said, or Jesus, in Jesus' day, the cross was an instru instrument of Roman to torture. They would line the roads up around Jerusalem with convicted criminals on them, dead and dying men, with their bodies bloated in the sun, surrendered by flies and covered by mag with magnets. They would also have them carrying them, carrying them to their place of crucifixion. Ooh, thank God we're not in that day. While facing ridicule along the way to their own excruciating death. Well, thank God that's not the kind of cross he's talking about where we're concerned today. 
because I don't know how long I could carry that cross to my crucifixion. So take up your cross means to associate yourself with Jesus and to share in his rejection. To take a stand for Jesus even when people make fun of you, talk about you, persecute you, or even try to kill you. Now, there's no one trying to kill us, but there's definitely people trying to persecute us today. Talking about us, laughing at us, because we say we Christian. I'm a Christian. But look at all the junk I've been saying and doing. Take up your cross means to embrace, disown, renounce, repudiate, spit it out to death of self. Your self wants, your self needs, your self desires. To take up one's cross means to be willing to pick up, not just occasionally, but pick it up daily. Carry the shame and rejection and suffering the death of Jesus himself was willing to carry for us, regardless of what it cost us, regardless of what it makes us look like publicly, or financially, or personally. Jesus said in John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, he must continue to follow me, to cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to my example in living, and if need be, dying. So to take up your cross daily isn't necessarily a physical death. It's a sacrifice of self. Whatever Jesus wants for our life must be done in our life. So to follow Jesus means to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. Not what you see on TV, not your mama, not your daddy, not the Republicans, not the Democrats. Not, I, and I'm going to rub that into it can't be rubbed in no more because we all have been privy to taking a side, and they all seem to not be doing well today. We put our trust, our faith, our dollar, our vote behind them. We pray, we ask, we forgive, we look over. So what that tells me is the government we're not supposed to be dependent on. So in 2021, are you going to put your faith in the government as a whole? Or are you going to put your faith in the Lord and choose Jesus over absolutely everything? I think if we take that stance, we're going to have issues and problems. But, yo, I'm going to tell you now, you're going to be at a much happier place a peaceful place, because you're not going to let anything disturb you. The Bible says in uh, Isaiah, and I lost it, but Isaiah, you can look it up. I think it's Isaiah 8, 7 or 8, number 1 to 2, or 1 to 15. It says, not everything, don't call everything a conspiracy. And at the bottom it says, trust me. So regardless of what's happening in the world today, don't rely on the things that you're hearing. Don't, rely, don't put your trust and faith and call everything a conspiracy. We all have a tendency to call things a conspiracy. Forget politics. It's a conspiracy that, uh, you know, you, you know, that um, we wear shoes or something, you know. Something stupid. Something ridiculous. We all tag a conspiracy theory behind it. We're all guilty of that. We're all guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. But he's saying don't call everything a conspiracy. Put your trust in me. So no matter what's happening, guess what? My trust is still in you. I'm not moved by what I see or hear. I'm moved by what I know. And you're still on the throne. Pastor G said that earlier. He's still on the throne. He's going to be still on the throne in 2021. But who are you going to serve? Who are you going to follow? So it's impossible to say you're Christian without following Jesus. But again, somehow, some way, we've associated with having a high moral standard, giving money to the poor, going to church, and serving our neighbors with being a Christian. That don't make you a Christian, y'all. That's not the qualifications of being a Christian. The qualifications of being a Christian is following the example, Jesus Christ. If you open up your Bible to Scripture, you will see the example is Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Mark 8, 34, if you truly want to, I mean, we're still leading back to the same thing. If you truly want to follow me, you should at once completely disown your own life. That's a process, y'all. But he's saying, disown your own life, and you must be willing to shame, share my cross experience as your own, and continuously, continually surrender to my ways. That's not easy. That's why we got to come to church. That's why we got to stay in Scripture. That's why if you're watching, if you're on CDs, DVDs, YouTube, you got to keep looking at people that are preaching the word. You got to keep coming to church. You got to be accountable, held accountable with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's like, uh, you know, bowling lanes. Those lanes that have dividers for them kids <laughs> is what? 
church is what? Accountability. All the things that I'm mentioning, you have to be willing to want to do that. And it all starts in your heart. I, I can't make you. I can't make you do anything. I can't, if you walk on me right now, I can't even say, stop. Because y'all going to just walk out. Y'all going gonna to do what you want to do. People do what they want to do. People are people, so what should it be? You and I should get along so awfully. Doom, doom, doom. That's the pesh mode in the 80s. Sorry. What I meant was people are people. They're going to do what they want to do. The best thing to do for you to be the example of the people that you live and how you live is to be the people that are continuously going straight in the word. You can't be moved by what people. I don't know how to quote that song Timberley has and Grady sang, but people are people, y'all, and you shouldn't really get bent out of shape. Sinner sins, Christians are supposed to be following Jesus. So I won't belabor the point there. Determining your heart and in your mind that you will give your life in exchange for his by repenting of the things you've done. Because every, every second that passes is something you've done. Putting to death your ideas, your plans, your desires in exchange for his. And there's a cost to this, and we're almost done. Turn to Luke 9, 57 to 62. It's, 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 it's a lot, but it's heavy. It says, and it's so amazing about God's word, the cost of following Jesus is the title. 57 says, on their way, I forgot where they were walking to, but on their way, someone came up to Jesus and said, I want to follow you wherever you go. Whoo! Jesus said, you sure about that? Yes, but remember this, even animals in the field have holes in the ground to sleep in and birds have their nests, but the Son of Man has no place to rest or lay his head. So you sure you want to follow me? Because I'm not sure where I'm going tonight. I'm not, I'm not sure where I'm laying my, laying my head in, 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 the, uh, in the Mirage or in the uh, Motel 6. You sure about that? He goes on to say, Jesus then turned to another and said, come be my disciple. He replied, someday I will, Lord, but allow me, to first to allow me first to fulfill my duty as a good man, as a good son, and wait until my father passes. Well, <laughs> that's a good man. But Jesus says, yo, come now. Because you're going to lose something if you don't come right now. Quickly, quickly, my son. He replied, somebody, someday I will. Lord, oh, I'm sorry. Jesus then another said, come my disciple. Yes, yes, yes. He says before he, his father passes. Jesus told him, don't wait for your father's burial. Let those who are already dead wait for the death. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere that God's kingdom has arrived. Still another said to, to him, the Lord, I want to follow you too. But first, let me go home and say goodbye to my entire family. I mean, Jesus, the Son of God, says, follow him. You're supposed to drop everything <laughs> and get to following him. Jesus responded, why do you keep looking backward to your past and have second thoughts about following me? When you turn back, you are useless to God's kingdom realm. In other words, Jesus is saying, you sure you want to follow me? Because if you do, it's not going to be easy. You ready to potentially lose everything, your friends, your family, your reputation, your career, and possibly your life? I wasn't, and I'm sure you wasn't when you went to the altar. Can you imagine if we did an altar call like this? Okay, everyone, if you're ready to lose your friends, your family, your reputation, your career, and possibly your life, come on down. Be the next contestant on The Price is Right. Sometimes you got to look at the word and just laugh because you're thinking, what you know now, what you know right now, would you tell Jesus, wait? What you know right now, would you tell Jesus, wait? Verse 62 says, Jesus responded, why do you keep looking back? If you're going to keep looking back at your past, what so and so did? Worried about your family and friends, what's happening on social media, what you're looking at on TV, stealing and cheating and killing and denying people their rights, then you're not going to be any use to the kingdom which lies ahead. So if your back is turned, you're not going to be any use for the, to the kingdom of God. That may sound harsh, but what Jesus is saying is if you want to succeed in your Christian walk, you're going to have to choose to be committed to him, focused to him, focused on him, and choose him above everything else. I didn't make up this word. Remember, the world is not convinced about who he is because they don't see him in us. 
so they can give two cents about this God and this Jesus we serve because the Christians that call themselves Christians don't even serve him in their behavior, speech, and activity. Well, in order to convince the world in 2021 we're not just, that we're not just any Christians, but Christians that follow Jesus, we're going to have to choose Jesus over everything. Jesus over everything. Say that. Jesus over everything. Over every ting, man? Yes. Far and beyond every ting. You know, remember I tell you, you laugh at me. But when, remember when I said money and money? Money and money? When people say money, they have a lot of money. Although it's the same. When people say what? Billion and billions? That billion emphasis is a lot of billions. Right? So, so imagine when you hear like a Rastafarian say every ting, man. That's every ting. That's not something, that's everything. Same meaning, but the emphasis, every ting is like covers, every, all, cover, covers it all. So you have to choose Jesus over every ting, man. That has to become your life. You have to choose him over your color. You got to choose him over your race, your ethnicity, your politics, your candidate, your president, your party, social media, and over your culture, your tradition. Are you a Jesus follower or are you a religious follower? Are you religious? Are you not operating in grace today? We have to bring, bring back the true meaning of being a Christian. And the true meaning of being a Christian is what? Following Jesus. There is no Christianity without Jesus. There is no Jesus without Christianity. But we have to make a stance and choose him and act like him in our behavior, speech, and activity. So I ask you today, I asked myself this today. Are you going to choose to be known as a Christian? Or are you going to be choo choose to be known as a follower of Christ? Now you say, Andre, that doesn't make sense. Well, I just broke it down. There's a Christian and there's a follower of Christ. A true Christian follows Christ. So what are we going to be in 2021? What are we going to be the rest of this year? This is something I've been battling with. You know, I get caught up. We all get caught up in speaking, going, going with the flow at work about politics and what's happening to the world and COVID, if it's real or not real. All that don't even matter. You know why? Because if you choose Jesus over everything, you'll make the right decisions. You'll say the right things. You'll be the right people. And people will then see that you are truly followers of Christ. Let's pray.